welcome back. This time we're going to talk about a special bit of syntax uh, that our compiler gives us, uh, and that is this bits syntax. Turns out that they've realized that special function registers are often made up of eight bits, which are quite independent. Um, so they've given you a special way to address a bit individually. Uh, the syntax is always the same. You take the special function register name, so like let's say it's port B, you add the word bits, all lowercase, uh, then you add a dot, um, and then you say the name of the bit. Um, so the names of the bits, uh, they've all got special names. Um, one of them here is called RB0, so that's a bit that's inside the port B, and then you can set just that one bit um, and not worry about messing up the other seven. So there are a lot of special function registers. Here's intcon, um, and we say the word bits, and then a dot. Intcon has a bit named GIEH. It stands for Global Interrupt Enable High. Don't worry about that today. Um, and you can set it to a value. So it's this really handy uh, bit of syntax that you have available because the compiler we use gives it to you, right? You've actually seen this syntax uh, numerous times before. And the place where you see it um, in every template uh, is right here. So OSCON bits, so we are individually accessing a bit. Here we're setting um, a bit called IRCF2, um, IRCF1, or IRCF0. So we're setting just that bit. And the nice thing is we set three of them, but we didn't mess up the other five bits uh, in that special function register. Um, so that's really the power. It lets you uh, not mess up the rest of it. Where we're going to be using bits a lot in this class is with GPIO, so the kind of an extension of what we talked about last time. Um, you can address each of the bits individually, uh, which is really handy. Oh, by the way, the, this piece of magic is made possible uh, because of this header file. Um, so every time you include this header file, which comes from our compiler. You can see it's from the C18 compiler. Uh, that's where it comes from. Let's go ahead and update our example to use some of this bit syntax. What I want to do is I want to um, do some inputs. You'll notice we didn't actually use inputs before. And so what I want to do is I want to say if uh, port, and you can type this as well, port b bits dot rb um, you can see that uh, MPLAB X tries to help you out, um, RB0, thanks. If it is pressed, uh, I haven't made pressed yet, but I will. Um, it says, hey, I have no idea what this press thing is. So that's fine. I do this a lot. Um, I make pound defines to make my code more readable. Um, because it turns out that when you press um, a button, it actually makes it grounded. Um, and when it's unpressed, uh, that's a one, right? And I, I make my code a lot more readable by just making those two pound defines. So if it's pressed, what I want to do is I want to turn on some lights. Uh, let's set port C bits dot RC. I'll pick the bottom one, RC4. That should be the bottom on the right side. So if it's pressed, make it a one. If it is not pressed, uh, then what I want you to do is I want you to uh, make it a zero. Being very lazy, I will copy paste. And then I'll go ahead and run this. So this, you can see the bit syntax is really handy uh, because all I want to do is I just want to look for one push button, so my RB0 push button, and I want it to control one LED. Um, so if I press this thing, so you can see that when I press it, it comes on. The other ones were on because my, my code before just left them on. Uh, the important thing is that this press uh, works to turn the light on. Also with the bit, bit syntax, um, you could update other things as well. Um, instead of setting all the trisses, um, you could have set just the ones that you cared about. Uh, so instead of setting all of them, so I'm just going to comment out this whole area. Uh, control forward slash did that comment on them all. If I wanted to, I could just say trisb dot, or sorry, trisb bits dot 
note that they have different names here. It's not called RB0, it's called TRISB0. Um, and if I wanted to make him an input, um, and then in TRISC bits dot TRISC, what did I do, four, um, I'll make him an output. Um, and so that will set the inputs and outputs same as the other code did, right? So the only thing I changed here is that the other lights will now be off. So I've only set the ones that I cared about. Um, and when I press it, oops, when I press it, it comes on. So it still works. Now every value is set. Um, and so all we did here is we let the unused ones be whatever the default was. Usually whatever the default is, is a fine thing to leave unused pens. Um, and usually that works out just fine and dandy. Uh, so that's the bit syntax. Couple more details. Uh, first thing I wanna warn you about is port E. If you look at port E, so I'll kind of go back a couple here. If you look at port E, you'll notice that there are only actually three pins uh, that we can use in port E. So there's RE0, RE1, RE2. There is an RE3, but don't ever use it. Um, so there's only three. And it turns out they were really sneaky uh, at Microchip. And they said, hey, if we're only using three, then you know we've got five bits of this special function register um, that are just that can be used for something else, to be honest. Um, and so that's what they did. So these top bits of Tris E do something totally different, right? And you don't want to mess with them. Uh, so the moral of the story is that you should always use the bit syntax um, when you're dealing with port E. So if you ever write to the entire register, you're mucking with things that you don't mean to be mucking with. So with port E, it's special. You have to use the bit syntax. That's pretty simple. What if, just hypothetically, um, what if this syntax didn't exist um, and you work with some other microcontroller in your life that didn't have this bits feature? Um, I'm not gonna dwell on this because obviously ours does have this feature. If you're in a situation that didn't have this bit syntax, uh, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to define um, like each bit, and then you can use some crazy little syntax like this. This will actually set it uh, high, um, and then if you wanted to set it low, you would do a crazy thing like this. If you wanted to read an individual bit out of it, you could do this. And to be honest, I, I mentioned this because um, most microcontrollers you have won't have this fancy feature, um, and you would have to do something like this. You will never be quizzed on that in this class. I just wanted you to know um, in case you ever use another microcontroller. All right, that's it for the bit syntax. Uh, see you next time.